everyone tonight to Straight Talk. Glad you could join us for this session. We're reaching out to people that are offended at God. Uh, maybe, maybe that describes you away from God, struggling with, with the things of God. And we're just having kind of a uh, dealing with some real life issues, giving some real answers, just straight from God's word, and uh, just reaching out to help people kind of grow, step up, and maybe understand some things that they haven't understood and, and even get free of things that have had them bound. And tonight, we're going to talk about deception. You know, the world we live in is, is full of deception, uh, deceptive advertising, deceptive, uh, you know, plans and programs and things that, that we hear. And then there's, there's things that people believe and people say that are just so way out there, but yet they have just enough truth uh, to get people to swallow. You know, they, they say, maybe you've heard the saying that, you know, um, if you want to get a, a dog to eat some, uh, you know, poison, you got to wrap that up in a good piece of meat. And, you know, I know that might be offensive to some people, but, you know, uh, that's the way that lies come. That's the way that deception comes. It's, it's wrapped up in something that looks like it's maybe what you want, uh, but then in the end, the effects are, are definitely negative. They're definitely not what you expected. And, uh, you know, sometimes it just takes you way farther than you ever thought you'd go and cost you way more than you could ever afford to pay. I want to read something to you. I would heard this, you know, and I've known this for years, but it's just uh, been well said that, you know, the worst kind of deception is when you're in it and you don't know it. I was uh, looking at... Um, some different quotes about deception and I came across this one and it said deception may appear to give us what we want for the present but in the end leaves us unsatisfied and you know there's two ways that you can be deceived in life you can believe a lie or you can refuse to accept the truth and uh, you know unfortunately many people swallow things they hear things you know someone said that said that said and it's all they know so they just figure well it must be right if so and so said but uh, you know we need to base our life on something more solid than people's experiences opinions uh, and the only thing that's solid that's true that's stood for thousands of years is the Word of God now don't turn this off just because I mentioned the Word of God why don't you hear what it has to say I think you'll be interested to know that God's Word speaks to the very um, issues of life. There's nothing under the sun that it doesn't speak to. It may not speak so specifically and use the wordage exactly as today, but it does speak to the issues of life. It does deal definitely with this subject we're talking about, deception. And you know, uh, 1 Corinthians, I want to read this to you. Just listen to this. It says, there are, it may be, many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without meaning. You know, there's always voices, there's always influences, there's always people and things that are suggesting and, and pulling, turn this way, go that way. I mean, you can watch, uh, you know, advertisements on TV and, and things that are just it, it seems almost ridiculous you know they got a new name for every kind of feeling that you have and it's always a, a sickness a disease and what do you know they got a drug for it of course in the caption they'll say it may cause these side effects and some of them are death uh, you know some of the side effects of the things that you'll listen to that you'll hear from people that you just haven't checked out you haven't looked into it and you've just swallowed it because well everybody else is doing it it might be something that'll take you down. It might be something that's already taking you down and you still don't have an answer. I want to read something else to you. You know, uh, the definition of influence, and we're talking about being deceived, and how does it come? Why does it come? What's going on? Well, uh, the definition of influence is the capacity to have an effect on a character or the development or behavior of someone. You know, and, and the best way to just kind of locate yourself and find out, you know, where am I at, is ask yourself some simple questions. What do you spend the most of your time listening to? Who do you hang out with? Who are you hanging around? Now, I know that when I turn my life over to the Lord, when I um, turn back to God, I was living a backslidden life away from God, didn't know anything, party life. 
And when I turned my life around, I slowly but surely began to realize that God wasn't even close to this harsh, hard, austere, distant God that I thought he was. And I don't know where I got all that from. It's just that the scripture does say that the God of this world blinds the minds of men so they won't possibly receive the glorious gospel. King James words a little bit different, but I like to talk in just the modern day language. And the, the God of this world is talking about a fallen being, talking about Satan. Yeah, he's not a guy with a pitchfork. He's a fallen angel. He's a liar. Jesus said he's the father of lies. That means he's the biggest liar there is. And he's wanting to deceive mankind, God's creation, uh, from believing that God is good, that God has an awesome plan for your life. He doesn't want you to know that you don't have to live the way you are. He doesn't want you to know that you can live a better life, that you can live an awesome life. He doesn't want you to know that you can live free. He wants you to think that whatever junky stuff, trashy stuff, horrible stuff going on in your life, you're just stuck with it and you're going to have to make it by the best you can. That's just a lie from hell. That's just, I'm just going to tell you this is straight talk or tell you straight up. It's a lie from hell. And maybe you've been believing that lie for a long time, but listen, God loves you. God cares about you. And maybe you've been told that God doesn't care, or maybe you've been told that God's mean, or maybe, you know, he killed this loved one of yours, or he caused this terrible calamity. You know, God, the Bible says, is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. Uh, the Bible says there's not even a shadow of turning. If you watch the sun on a sundial and you watch that thing, you can see the shadow just change and turn. But God doesn't change. And that's the reason that we can trust him, because what he said, even though we've got scriptures that have been recorded from better than 2,000 years ago, God's still the same. Say, so how do you know? Well, David said it like this, and I'll use his words. He said, I tried him, and I know that he is true. And I've been walking with God for over 30 years now, and I can tell you that as I continue to try him, prove him, to see if he is what he says he is, I always find out he's exactly what he says he is. He's faithful, he's true, he's merciful, he's loving, he's kind, he's a deliverer. Listen, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but when I was living in the world in that party life, people I hung out with, we had this phrase, talk is cheap. God didn't just talk about coming back for man and saving man and redeeming man from a lost condition and from their sin and from their degradation and all the pain and the hell that people go through in life. He went through with asking his only son to die a horrible death at the hands of sinful men so that he could redeem you, just get the chance to have you back, to buy you back, and the price, it was blood. Now that's radical love, man, that's radical love. And there's nothing greater than the love of God. There's nothing more pure than the love of God. And there's nothing more real than his presence. God lives, God reigns in the lives of those who allow him. You know, sometimes you say, well, if God wants all this from me, why doesn't he just do it? Because you have a will. There is a price. Jesus shed his blood. But here's how it works. You've got to give up your most precious valuable possession if you want eternal life and that's your heart it takes an act of your will God's provided salvation for all but you have to give your heart over to him and receive him into your life you see nobody uh, you know goes to hell the hell's not designed for man it's designed for the devil and the fallen angels people by their choices listen to me people by their choices send themselves to hell they don't, they don't, God doesn't send you there. It's not for you. It's never meant for you. But Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only name. His name is the only name under heaven according to the word of God that's able to bring salvation for mankind. And the salvation is in his name. And if you'll believe in your heart, that God has raised him up from the dead, that he paid the sacrifice for your sin, and you'll confess his lordship. You'll say, I receive you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. I acknowledge you. I receive you into my life. Well, then you'll be saved. 
But you know, if you reject him and you refuse, which is also your choice, you have, the, you have that choice. God won't take it from you. Then there's only one other option for you. And so listen, deception is such a wicked thing because deception uh, presents itself to have something of value, something that's going to make your life better, something that's going to change things, something that's going to uh, enhance your life, and yet you find out it's just a mask, it's a smoke screen, it's a mirage, it isn't real, there's no substance to it. And that's the reason why, you know, maybe some of you people, you're in the party life and you just party and, oh man, you got to try the good stuff. You know, I did that. Uh, we went from one good stuff to another good stuff to another good stuff and everybody always had the good stuff at least once or twice a month. But after the end of the road, you're just like, really, is this all there is? Is this, is this... <laughs> Is this as far as it goes? I did so many drugs, so many stupid things. Let me tell you, that stuff is so sorry. The life of God will put a joy on the inside of you. The presence of God. The Bible says Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And you will never have peace till you have Him. But when you invite Him, you will have peace in your world. Peace on the inside. All hell can be breaking loose on the outside. And you'll have peace on the inside. But it's what you believe. It's what you believe. Listen to this. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about uh, staying on course in a in a deceptive world. How am I gonna How am I gonna walk the right road? How am I gonna make the right decision? Well, Jesus said this um, in uh, John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, verse six. Jesus said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." You know, I, I ran into a guy and he was trying to get me to prove this to him. The Bible never called us to prove the gospel. We're to proclaim it. It's a truth and you must believe it. But if you believe and act upon this, then you'll reap the results of not only eternal life, but you will find that just as God said, Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Let me tell you, somebody that was willing to shed their blood and die and give up their life and go through a cruel death to purchase people who might say, no, I don't want that. No, I don't believe in that. that that's just hard to wrap your mind around. That's love that you don't see in this world. That's the love of God. And Jesus gave his life. He said, I'm the truth. He said, I'm the way. I'm the life. But you got to take a step. You got to give God something to work with. Now listen, God's word is both the instruction manual of life and it's also the empowerment for victorious living. It's, the Word of God, it's not like a history book, although it tells us about history. It gives us words for living. It gives us the empowerment. Jesus said, my words are spirit and their life. It's not just ink on a page. If you embrace the Word of God, I'm telling you, there's the power of God available in it and through it to change your life, change your circumstances. Jesus bore your sickness and disease on the cross. The Bible says that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Man, if your mind is going through a bunch of crazy stuff, you're confused, you don't know what's going on, the power of God is present, it's real, and it's here while you're watching this to set you free. And if you would just call out to God and say, God, you know, save me, set, set my mind free, or maybe you've walked away from God and you've just been away for a long time, just say, God, uh, I was wrong. I need you. Let let my mind go free. Straighten out my thoughts. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. And I'm telling you, God will reach down and touch you and something will happen. And you'll be different. You'll be changed by his power. God is good. God is mercy. The Bible tells us in the book of Lamentations that if it wasn't for his mercies, we would be consumed. But God's mercies are new every morning. You know, God's not mad at you. God's not against you. What God wants is for you to have your eyes opened, have your heart opened, and see that serving him and walking with him and receiving his word 
and receiving the truth of the Word of God is what will change your life so you really have the life that you long for on the inside, the life that you desire so greatly. You know, many people are looking for peace, they're looking for joy, and they're trying to find it in vacation, they try to find it in entertainment, they try to find it uh, in drugs and in alcohol, they try to find it in movies and games, and I mean, it, just the list goes on forever. I read a statistic uh, that talked about the billions of billions of dollars that people spend on this planet for entertainment. You know, and I'm not against entertainment, but people are searching. People are hungry. There's something on the inside that's just not getting satisfied. But it's His Word. It's His Word that's more precious than silver. It's more valuable than gold. It's God's Word that will satisfy you. In fact, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, if you're hungry, He said, come to me and drink. And he was talking about drinking in the eternal life, the life of God. That might sound hard for you to wrap your mind about. What does that mean? It just means when you receive God's word and you receive what he has to say, you're just receiving that into your life. It's like drinking water, cool water on a hot day. It'll refresh your life. It'll change your life. It'll empower your life. You say, that just sounds too simple to be true. Have you done it? Have you done it? I had a guy just, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know, I just think this and I just think that. And I just looked at him and I said, listen, <laughs> a man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an argument. I've experienced him. I've proven him. I've been, I've been testing him out for th over 30 years. And all I keep finding is that he's good. He loves me. He never changes. He's always there for me. Anytime I want to talk to him, he's always listening. Some of you watching this, that might just blow your mind. What? You talk to God and he talks to you? Yeah, he'd like to talk to you. He'd like to get involved in your life, but you got to open the door. And if you won't open it, he's not pushing it open. He's not kicking it open. He's not, you know, uh, going to force anything on you. But I'll guarantee you this, his heart longs for you to open that door. And you got nothing to lose. You got absolutely nothing to lose. Why don't you reach out to him tonight? Why don't you reach out to him today? Why don't you say, God, I need you. I want you. Say this with me right now. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. And I ask you to come into my heart right now. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Change my life. Change it now. I accept you and I give you my heart. If you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You just received eternal life. Because the scripture says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you'll believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that God is raising from the dead and confess with your mouth his lordship, then you'll be saved because the Bible says in verse 13 that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God turns away no one. Listen, eternal life is the very thing that you received when you believed. I want to share something else with you here. Not only is, is uh, God's word the instruction manual and the empowerment, but you know, uh, many people struggle with with you know things and they wonder why why don't i get this well you know again the, the bible says that the god of this world has blinded the minds of men lest they should see the light of the glorious gospel he's blinding their minds he's clouding stuff he's masking it you know like a charade and he doesn't want you to see but the holy spirit of god will open your eyes he'll cause you to see you need to receive jesus first and then secondly if you've done that and you're in confusion listen god's not the author of confusion the bible says that um he he's given us a sound mind the scripture tells us in first corinthians that we have the mind of christ and you need to receive eternal life and then you need to receive the word of god and say lord thank you that i have a clear mind that i have a sound mind thank you for it in jesus name and if you'll do that then you will find that God's power will set you free. It'll change your life. Now, 
I'm going to read some other things. You know, uh, you have to ask yourself this question. Um, if, you're, if you're really going to change and see things change in your life, you're going to have to ask the question, you know, um, where am I at? What am I listening to? Who am I believing? Who am I, who am I hanging with? I mean, it's a tough question, but influence has everything to do with it. It can be thoughts, it can be TV, uh, newspaper, people, you know, but what are you listening to? God's Word is truth. God's Word has life in it, but uh, if people aren't speaking the truth in line with God's Word, if they're not speaking truth in light in line with the Bible, then the Bible says, you know, they're just blind. People that don't know God and don't know what's going on, but are acting like, you know, the worldly wise man, listen to us, we know the way, we know what's going down. Listen, you know, Jesus said that's just the blind following the blind. <laughs> One's leading, the others are following, but they're both, he said, will end up in the ditch. <laughs> and if you, I, I mean, you know, it's, I guess it would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic, but you know, uh, there's a lot of areas in my life where I ended up in the ditch because of who I was hanging with, who I was following. I got into trouble. I mean, come on, you know what we're talking about here. And uh, if, if what you're doing and what you've been doing isn't working, guess what? It's time for a change. It's time for a change. And, uh, you know, the definition of insanity is just doing the same thing over and over you know, day after day, month after month, year after year, and expecting different results. That's insane. It's time for a change. Uh, I want to read something to you. You know, I asked you, what, what voices, you know, what are you listening to? Well, in Second Peter, book of Second Peter, uh, verse 18, this is a living Bible. The ungodly, they kind of talk like this. The scripture says that they boastly uh, that they proudly boast about their sins and their conquest and uh, using lust as their bait and they lure you back into the sin and those who have just escaped from such wicked living they say well you know you're not saved by being good well that's true you're not you're saved by by grace through faith you know you believe in your heart it's the grace of God. The Bible says salvation is the gift of God. However, they kind of go, so you might as well, you know, just live, live any kind of way. You know, just do what feels good. Haven't you ever seen those signs on the highway? If it feels good, just do it. Man, there's some things that might feel good for a moment, but might take your life. Ever think about it? There's a lot of things that might feel good momentarily, but they ain't going to last long. You know, uh, crackheads feel good for a little bit. But when it's frying their brains out, and uh, you know, I mean, how good can I feel <laughs> after it's all over? How good can it feel when you're making the wrong choices and then you find out, oh my gosh, how, how long does that good feel last? In God, it lasts forever. It's for eternity because on the inside, you always have that peace. It's not a dream. It's not here today and gone tomorrow. It's not a one night fix and, you know, Woohoo, and then tomorrow I feel like crud again. Because on the inside, you've been changed. You see, God gives us joy. The world thrives on happiness. Happiness is dependent on circumstances. Joy is independent of it. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And, you know, people that are worn out and frustrated and, and you know, just uh, don't know which way to go and what to do and they're at their wits end, those people don't have any energy either because they don't have any joy and they don't have any peace when they're like that. And if that's you, this can all change. Listen to this. It said, um, you know, when a person has escaped from the wicked ways of the world by learning about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then gets tangled up with sin and becomes a slave again, then he's worse off than he was before. Scripture says it'd be far better if he'd never known about Christ at all than to learn about him and afterwards turn his back on the holy word of God that was given to him. There's an old proverb saying that says, a dog comes back to what he has vomited and a pig is washed only to come back and wallow in the mud again. And that's the way it is with those who turn again uh, to their sin. You know, uh, 
it's just it's just crazy but there's so many people today and maybe you're like this maybe you were like me you knew God once and then you but you know when I knew him I didn't know diddly and I turned from God because I just I just had no no influence to keep me there but maybe you you've known God and you got offended and you allowed offense and the deception of of the things that you were being told to pull you away and pull you out and steer you away from God and you're just like yeah you know what I don't need him I mean he's never there for me and you bought into a lie and now you know you bought into a lie well it's not too late to come back this is the best time right now while you're watching this doesn't matter day or night I don't care if you're watching this uh, later on my website this is live right now but you might be watching this uh, in the archives or YouTube listen God is right where you're at he's as close Jesus is as close as the mention of his name and if you will call out to him the Bible says he's rich to all who call upon him he's waiting for your response he's waiting for you to initiate something if you will simply reach out to him I'm telling you He's right there. You may not be aware, but if you will call his name, I'm telling you that confusion will break off your life. If you'll call out to his name, he'll deliver you from drug addiction. If you'll call out to his name, he will set you free from that loneliness and broken heart. God is able to absolutely restore you and bring you to a place where you have self-respect, where you have uh, an esteem in life uh, to step forward and to do things that are of value and to do things that make you have a sense of self-worth you know God doesn't want you to live with your head down and your your eyes down and your attitude down and like everybody's just so much better than you and you're worthless and who wants me around listen that's just a depressing demon haunting your mind hassle in your life and God wants you free God wants you free of it if you'll call out to him He'll set you free. I want to read a couple other things here. Uh, let me say this to you right here. Listen, if, if you've gotten to the place where you had to start compromising morals, your morals and standards for other people, then it's time to change the people that are in your life. If, you're, if you've gone against what you've known is right and that's who you've been hanging with, doesn't matter if you've been doing it for a week, a month, or five years. Man, it's, it's time to change it. It's time to get some different company. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. You say, well, I'm, I'm corrupt myself. Well, uh, okay. God's bigger than that. God's bigger than your mess. He's bigger than your nasty mouth. <laughs> He's bigger than your rotten attitude. He's bigger than your sin. He's bigger than your lust. He's bigger than your shame. Listen, God loves you and God wants you. And you've just got to say, okay, God, here I am. Here I am. If you'll take me like I am, I'm yours. If you've got the willingness to just say it, just say it, just say it, he will take you. He'll transform you. He'll change you. He'll break you free of the bondage that you're in. And I'm telling you, he will totally revolutionize your life. You got to stay with him. Don't hike off. Don't run away. Stop listening to fear. What if he doesn't? What if it doesn't work? Listen, forget that stuff. Forget it. Nothing's been working for you. Nothing's been right. You know it. God knows it. Your friends probably know it. Why don't you call out to Jesus right now, right where you are, and say, Hey, I need you. I need you right now. I need you in my life. He will answer you. He will set you free. Uh, the Bible says this, 119th Psalm. He says, Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my feet. It's a light for my pathway. The Living Bible says it this way. Your words are a flashlight to the path ahead of me and keep me from stumbling. If you're going to stay on course, if you're going to get on course and stay on course in a deceptive world, you've got to make a quality decision to choose God in his word and make God's word final authority in your life. 
if you that just simply means you know what I don't know I know this and I know that and I see this going on I see that and I hear this report and I hear that before but what does God's Word have to say and if you find out what God's Word has to say then you can say okay I'm going with God's Word uh, God's God has a good promise here I see that God loves me the scripture says God loves me God cares about me I'm just gonna choose to believe it that's making God's Word final authority it's when you shut down everything else and you say nope I'm not going that way I'm going with God listen Thank you for joining us for Straight Talk. Right now, I'm going to pray for you. I sense some of you watching this. Uh, you know, you're just away from God. You, you've been away for a long time. It's time to come home. You know, the Bible tells about the prodigal son. Went off and ride us living. You know, he went his way, spent money, acted like a fool. Uh, hit the bottom. He was willing to eat pigs' food. He was watching them eat, and he got so hungry for it, he ended up eating it. That's desperate. Maybe you're desperate. But God doesn't want you to keep living like that. I want to pray. I want you to pray with me. Just make this prayer that I pray your prayer, okay? You don't have to figure out what to say. Just listen to me. Repeat what I'm saying. Just mean it from your heart. That's cool with God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. I ask you to forgive me for living in sin, controlling my own life. I need you, and so I ask you now, change me, make me new, help me to live for you, change my life, turn it around. I give you my heart afresh, and I choose to serve you. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, God heard what you said, he took you at your word, and now then you need to just call on his name. The Bible said, what can I do for the Lord for, for the good things, you know, that he's done to me? The psalmist David said it. And the answer of God was that you would call on the, on the Lord and, and take the cup of salvation. It's just simply saying, hey, the best thing you can do to say thank you to God is call on him again. Reach out to him and say, I need you. I want your wisdom. I need your guidance. I need your help. If you'll do that, I promise you. God will step in to your circumstances and he'll make a change.